You're listening to We Deep in Media. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Deepen with Christina. I'm your host, Christina Weber, founder and CEO of We Deepen, Feminine Weapon, and also a certified professional love coach. If you haven't lately, go to wedeepen.com, see all the upcoming social and transformational experience that I've curated for you, specifically if you desire to have a healthy, epic, loving relationship, these experiences are especially for you. You'll see on the homepage of We Deepen, there is a link to Kimmy Inch's Something More. If you haven't been to Austin, Texas, if you're not living here, this is a good time to visit. Actually, I'm going to tell you another good time to visit, but we're going to focus on Kimmy Inch right now. Something More is a four-day immersion into kink and BDSM. It's happening February 8th through the 11th and the 15th through the 18th. It is... um, Well, I talked about it on a podcast. So any, if you search for any of the episodes I've done with Kimmy Inch, definitely listen to them and it will awake you into your erotic self to help you explore. And if you're in a relationship, bring your partner, deepen with them. Uh, If you're currently single, half of the people in the space are single. It's a great way to bond. I did the event in October and I was one of about... 10 single women in the space, maybe a little bit less. There was only one single man there. So if you're listening and you are a man who's currently single, I highly recommend go check it out. Practice with other women. And the party, the event does lead into a play party, which we're going to talk more about play parties here today. Check out that calendar again. You also see all types of upcoming dating experiences. I had a call just an hour or so ago with Allie from The Feels. And she has a dating experience happening in New York City, Philly, and bringing it out to Los Angeles that I'm going to share more with you about later. Uh, So check that out. Check the Tantra speed dates out. And uh, yeah, I, I want to be with you more in 2024. And if you're listening to this podcast and these events have passed, it's okay. There's more coming up for you. And uh, and you can still check out Kimmy Inch's parties. If you do enjoy this podcast, please do like, subscribe, rate, follow. It helps more people find it, helps me continue to host it. And again, while I'm speaking to you and you may be driving your car or cleaning your house, what I enjoy most is being with you in person. So definitely come and and be with us together. I'm overcoming a little bit of a cold. So if I happen to cough, or maybe you're getting a little raspy voice right now, um, just notice that's that's what's happening. Uh, so I'm here in Austin in my new home, and I have the Emily's here with me today. You know, if this podcast has been getting if I want to use the word raunchy, it's not really raunchy. It's more of like kinky or freaky at times. Uh, There is a New Year's party coming up in Austin. It's called Witness. And the Emily's are hosting this party. They hosted one um, like March of this year for their birthday. They both have the same birthday, March 18th. And they hosted an unholy event. And it has led into an unfoldment of a series of erotic parties that are best for people who have studied Tantra and consent and have explored eroticism in some way. Because when you go to this, it is XXX rated. So if you want to immerse yourself, and if you are, I'll say like have studied even like self-development or self-aware, you're not going to come into a space and be triggered by, or be offended by, um, you know, two people fucking in a corner. This is... This is the place. So New Year's Eve, if you want to start 2024 off in a very erotic way, I'm going to go by this party. Um, Lots of people in Austin will be at this party and the Emily's are hosting it. Welcome the two of you. uh, First time on Deep In with Christina. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's get into it. I know you two are longtime friends, met at Burning Man, and uh, and your birthday party, you hosted this erotic experience and holy what like how did how did it happen so unholy was developed uh at our friend's house emily and i were hanging out after a girl's night and emily approached me and said emily we have to do something for our birthdays because they're on the same day and and emily after a few minutes of consideration was like yeah, you know, what I think I want to do is go to Barton Springs with a small handful of our closest girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. And, um, <laughs> and I was like, I think I have another idea. <laughs> so very quickly, she suggested we throw a huge party. I don't know if you suggested that this party would be open sex friendly. I, I think you did. And then, and then it snowballed from there and, um, it turned into a very cohesive vision with the both of us in these very edgy parts of us that we wanted to exacerbate That's and right. express to our friends and the Austin community. And, um, it just turned into this really beautiful development, which we planned in less than two weeks. And it was, um, it was a banger. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> and you would call this, this, this was a play party. Um, n- no, we, we don't like to use that term. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, so essentially when I first pitched the concept to Emily, I pulled up, um, Sam Smith's unholy music video. And I was like, this something with this energy. Um, I have no idea how, like how or where or whatnot, but, um, but, but I'm, I'm obsessed with this and Emily. And when I started to tell, uh, Emily about, um, like more about the vision and more about like the energetic that I was feeling with this, um, which had to do with just very, uh, like almost like sexual performance artistry, kind of cutting edge, um, dark, but safe, um, yeah, energetics. Um, and Emily, uh, had a similar want. She had been exploring her own want to throw a a party with sex happening at it. And, um, I wasn't sure about the sex part happening at it right then. I just knew I wanted it to have like an, an, an insane amount of edginess. And so we started to, um, yeah, develop out the concept. And it turned out that there was just so much in alignment with, um, with the, the vibe of the vision. And, um, and in fact, when it comes to like, um, we, we, we tend to steer away from typical, um, verbiage like, um, you know, play parties or sex parties or, um, anything like that, because what we're creating is actually, um, pulls different elements from different, uh, from different walks of, of life and expression and art and sexuality and, um, and culture and actual, like, um, we like to think of it as sort of revolutionary in a way, um, because we're kind of mashing up, um, a a bunch of different, uh, aspects of things. And so simply calling it a sex party or a play party would not at all encompass what we're actually creating, which I actually like to call sex art. Um, and, Emily has her own ways of talking about it. Yeah, that was a really good way of describing. Um, <clears throat> I also have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something I love about our parties um, is that it is a way for us to encompass, especially Austin's culture of um, different types of trainings and workshops and communities and subcultures. Um, you know, I've, I've been here for several years and I really like how this is a small city with a huge variety of subcultures. So I've been able to scratch my itch in all of these different (laughs) ways. Um, and it's been great, uh, over the years I've traveled the world, um, uh, going to techno parties and sex parties of all kinds. So having such a wide scope of experience, uh, and, taking certain parts of it for myself and becoming more whole in that process and healing my trauma and discovering who I really am, um, in, in these really edgy, uncomfortable spaces and realizing that safety, realizing like how that safety lands within myself, um, which, 
was quite the endeavor. Um, you know, it wasn't always easy for me. So realizing this uh, journey in self-discovery has really helped me uh, develop, this par- develop this party because uh, it's like a safe way for me to explore edges together and like being in that discomfort in a really playful way and merging cultures through techno and the play party culture here in Austin and the Tantra culture and Neo Tantra um, and the edginess of, of queer communities and so on. All of this has been so important to bring together in cohesion uh, rather than have like more of a, a divisive or a separate siloed culture, which, um, yeah, is uh, I think something that we were bringing a solution to. You first did this for your birthday. And I imagine that means the guest list was a lot of friends. This party, though, that you're hosting on New Year's, it's the first one, I believe, that you're selling tickets. There is an application process, so there will be some vetting happening. But it's not necessarily a, a group of friends coming together. How, how do you feel about that? You're kind of casting the net. You're, you're welcoming more people into the space. Yeah, um, it is actually still largely um, close community based. So um, something that was so potent about Unholy in March was was the attendee list. And there was so much magic that um, such intimacy amongst um, friends and close community members. Um, the, the, the Yeah, what that um, brought into the space, just the fact that everybody knew each other, had access to each other was um, really helped uh, I don't know, create the vibe of the event in general. It was one of the things that made it so special. And we really didn't want to lose that this time around. So um, while we are aiming for double the participants, and that's the first time, um, the way we're going about it is really, really um, intentional and still very close to home. So, you know, starting with the, the unholy guest list and um, making it accessible for them and their plus ones um, and... And in, and in that, um, still inviting in a lot of support. Um, one of the other things that made Unholy such a special event is that it was, um, uh, it had, it was community driven in a lot of ways. Um, once so many people heard about what we were doing in that two week process, everybody just kept being like, oh my gosh, how can I help? Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to bring that. And it, it was how we were able to put together such a powerful uh, experience for so many people in such a short time frame. And so this time around, um, we still have uh, a lot of people um, from our original guest list showing up with um, support in artistry, um, support in execution, production, um, things like that. So um, so in that, we do still have a lot of the OGs um, and uh But we also wanted to open up a little bit beyond that. And we're like, you know, how do we do that in a way that keeps this container um, as personal and um, like proximal relationally um, as possible? Uh, In other words, not going so far outside of our initial circles. Right. Um, So still still proximal in like relationship and circles. And so we have, yeah, affiliated with, um, you and, um, two other very close, uh, friends in who have a specific type of, um, community that surrounds them that are of the, the like ideal culture fit to our original guest list. Um, and then we do have, uh, the, uh, the (laughs) vetting process, the application process is, um, extensive and, you know, and a lot of, uh, marketing or sales, um, training, it's like, it's called a barrier to entry. And we made a massive barrier to entry because we do not want, we cannot have, um, just anybody or people who aren't, um, equipped to participate at the level that's required to create safety in a container that actually has its guardrails off in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I saw this trend and maybe, maybe it's just when I got into the bubble uh, that came from COVID. That, you know, on this podcast I've talked to, the founders of Kiki Rabbit Club, Mystery Temple in LA, Yosef Sagi, uh, you know, Kimmy Twice, 
You're friends with Yosef? Yeah, I just realized. <laughs> Yosef is yeah, awesome. Totally. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I haven't talked to the lovely fate, but there's lovely fate and there's a lot of, you know, kind of more, I've seen like more sexually expressiveness happening um, around the conscious community scene more so than ever before. And I, I think a little bit of it is like we, we saw there was for the past decade, there has been an immersion into self-development and growth and transformational workshops. And, and I think a lot of people have, um, come out of that experience and like, we want intimacy. Like we want to go deeper. We also want to feel our pleasure. And I also think we're a little of a generation that we're unwilling to accept being in relationships that, that are like, that aren't of our highest excitement, like that aren't also challenging us and, and, and like being with somebody who's like a growth partner. Um, and, and when you're in, like when you're not willing to accept what maybe generations before did in your intimacy life, uh, there's first off I, I'm 42 and in my mid 30s to like 40 ish there was times I went my first Burning Man experience I actually uh, I had gone I hadn't had sex in a year when I showed up to Burning Man and I had one of my intentions I was like my intentions for Burning Man it was my first Burning Man they always ask everyone like what's your intention and my fir- my intention was like well I need to have sex. And intention number two was business focus. It was like, I need to find an entrepreneur coach who sees what I'm creating and can coach me. <laughs> and night number one, I, yeah, I showed up at Burning Man and I, it was the first time ever as a woman that I felt like I went out on the hunt. Um, I found an, a, a handsome man and I succeeded night number one. I was like, this is great. <laughs> wow. That was so fun. And it was actually easy. Um, but there's a lot of people that aren't feeling like if you're not in a relationship, sometimes we like suppress that piece of us that, you know, feels pleasure. And I will also say is like, I, as I've been personally exploring the play party scene, I've gone to many play parties and not taken my clothes off and, um, and more been like a voyeurist, is that a voyeurist inside of that experience? Like I've been more of like a witness of the experience. Uh, and, um, and I think just being around that erotic energy wakes me up. And I've seen that some of the best relationships have come from two people that were at experiences like a play party and they connect it and they started out, you know, we, we, we kind of were a society that were like, wait to fuck, you know, <laughs> don't jump in. And I think there's, there's some truth to that. Like don't get attached too quickly. But I think maybe once you have that training of, uh, you know, relaxing your nervous system and connection, having greater discernment of who you're connecting with, then you get to this other level that you can go to a play party and you can actually formulate a really quick bond and end up in relationship that is healthy and thriving with somebody that you met at a play party space. Because let's face it, if you're not fucking, you're most likely in a friendship. Mm. Uh, So that one might've been a little bit of uh, a ramble there. Uh, how are you seeing, like the, the people who are coming to these spaces, are they coming with their partners? Are they coming single? We have all walks of life at our parties. And something I find really interesting is that um, it's not very, um, how do I say, like, it's not like vaginal sex focused. There is so much creativity at our parties. Um, One component is that you can't even get in if you don't put effort into your attire. We have no effort, no entry. And there is a door person who will dom you Mm -hmm. if you do not have a look to show up. So you have to make sure that your look is on point and you're expressing yourself to like, you know, exacerbating yourself. Um, So 
Yeah, the the whole party is so much more beyond penetrative sex. And we really highlight that. Um, there's all sorts of scenes happening. There's all sorts of props and um, performances. Uh, gosh, I mean, you know, we, we have several artists that are going to be performing in ways that <coughs> no one has seen at play parties, most likely. Um, yeah, there is uh, any sort of formula that you typically see at a sex party or a play party in any culture is thrown out the window with our party because we're merging so many different cultures together and um, we're definitely creating a, a new culture with, with what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, people are in relationships. People are, are single, um, all walks of life, all in, in sexual orientations. We really celebrate all of it. And uh, we have noticed uh, through, through our time in this space that the queerer it is, the more creative it is. So um, we definitely celebrate that. And, um, yeah, we celebrate the, the creative eroticism. That's, like, number one. And if you have sex, great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's get a little s- specific of <laughs> like, what's something like, can you tell me a story of <laughs> your previous experience? Like unholy, like what specifically <laughs> happened? I mean, can you, and I know I will caveat this with, I do believe there's confidentiality agreement <laughs> signed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know you can't fully probably tell everything, but it is, it is as close to what it's like to be there. Actually, I want to talk a little bit about the confidentiality real quick. Um, and then I want us to decide if we want to share anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the confidentiality, like, um, part of the container that we are building, um, part of what makes it different, um, is our relationship to consent, um, uh, our, how we approach consent and also confidentiality. Um, So, uh, actually I kind of want you to speak to the consent piece, but I just want to talk about the confidentiality (laughs) piece for a second, um, which is, uh, just cause it came up here and that's, um, that like we, uh, we, we do actually ask for, um, like ideally our event is semi underground, you know, we, in the initial conceptions of what we're creating here, I was like, um, you know, let's, we, we have no marketing. Let's keep it off social media. Let's, we text message marketing only just into the text, just into the texts. Um, nothing, nothing beyond that. No social media and definitely no podcasts. Right. So (laughs) I know you guys are all getting the exclusive. So keep listening. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, Yeah. And that's because, uh, the underground nature of what we're doing, um, because we're mashing up like different cultures and different vibes and, um, kind of like, um, breaking almost like implicit agreements in the, you know, play party spaces with, with what we're bringing in to our events, which we have not yet spoken to here. Um, (coughs) it, 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 it's, 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 like imperative that there's, um, an honoring of the people who choose to attend and their privacy and, and, and even, um, like an honoring of the event itself and what we're creating, um, in, uh, it's like a respect of that container. And so, for example, when you come into the party, we have a cell phone surrender station. So, um, we actually take your cell phone and keep it safe for the night. Um, but, it's, you know, uh, video photos, anything like that is absolutely prohibited. And if we, if you're caught taking any videos or photos, you're actually banned from any future that get booted right there and are banned from any future party. We take our, um, you know, we have high profile people <coughs> that come to our events and, um, whether they're high profile or anybody else, we take, uh, we really respect, you know, um, what, it's like how vulnerable, how, how people can get vulnerable in the space is by feeling, um, you know, that sense of safety with, there's no risk of it getting, of what's happening in there, you know, getting out beyond, um, the scope of that container. Um, as long as everybody chooses to respect, um, confidentiality to the, to the way, in the way we set it up uh, verbally as well at the beginning of the event. So, yeah. Yeah. And, um, to speak on the consent component, something that is really different that we do is that this is a, a consent-based container, um, but we don't facilitate 
at our events. So a lot of other parties where um, sex is permitted and all sex acts are permitted, there tends to be um, connection games and uh, games around consent to practice prior to going into the play space. And Emily and I actually don't do that. We actually only accept attendees who are already well-trained in that. So, um, yeah, we have, this is for advanced players and there is a lot of beauty in having advanced players into letting go of facilitating because, because this is such a creative party, Emily and I have had to release the grip and just allow this art form to, to take a life of its own. You know, it's like, uh, some, we sometimes refer to this as our, as our baby and our baby, you know, at, at a certain point you have to let it go and it will take its own form. If we're too controlling, then it'll be trapped and it, it can go out sideways and then we can get into shadowy things, but we, we let it, we let it do its thing. So yeah, at, at Unholy, we had, uh, we had quite, quite, the experience, especially toward later in the night, gosh, shall we? Um, it had to have been around like 4, 4 a.m. or so. And uh, a guest who uh, we are friends with had inquired with us about um, a silly little fantasy that I put out there. And he uh, just so happened to catch wind of it because unholy was filled with our friends and the friends were talking and then, and then he, he heard, um, what, what my fantasy was. And it was really silly to me because, uh, A, I didn't think it would get back to him. B, he is a, a public figure who I'm a fan of and he is right here at, at our party and he's telling me that he is a yes to this fantasy. Um, and so I am, uh, my heart, my heart's racing and I realize, uh, I'm going to need some, some help. So I call in Emily, I grab Emily by the arm and I'm like, bitch, get over here, (laughs) you know, mid, mid hosting, you know, 4am. And I'm like, girl, this man, (laughs) this man wants us to do this thing. And uh, I need your help. You, you need to dom me into doing this because I cannot do this on my own. Like you're going to have to dom me in, into it or else it's not going to happen. And Emily said, okay, let's do it. And, and so, so we just like, you know, chest pound, buck up. And we're like, all right, we're going to do the damn thing. And so, so, so time goes on. Time goes on and uh, I get ready for the scene <coughs> and we'll, ex- we'll explain how I get ready for it. But Emily, Emily decides to, um, to uh, direct me and our friend, our, our male friend, who I'm such a huge fan of, this high profile public <laughs> figure. And uh, I'm freaking out inside. I've never done a scene like this of, of this caliber in, in my life. And so thank God Emily steps in and doms me, doms me the fuck into it. And so she directs, <laughs> she directs me and, and this man to lay out a tarp in the middle of the party. And now I'm looking around and I see whispers all around the party. And I'm like, oh, word is getting out that this is happening. We lay out the tarp. And then the man and I are then directed by Emily to lay out a massage table on top of the tarp. And now I see a crowd forming. I'm, again, freaking out. And I'm like looking to Emily, you know, we've bonded so much through planning this party and I'm looking at her like, girl, this is really, you know, everything's coming to a head here. And, uh, and then she directs us to do all these silly things. Emily doms me into, into dancing with this man and, you know, doms me into taking his clothes off to reveal his cock ring in front of everyone. The crowd is going wild. We're presenting his cock ring to everyone. And then my clothing is removed. And then Emily directs someone to go get my gimp mask. So I have this gimp mask I got in, in Berlin. A gimp mask is like a... Um, gosh, how do I describe? It goes over the mouth. It's like this harness. It's a harness for your head. It's a harness for your head. Um, 
If you're not familiar, I recommend Googling it and buying one. <laughs> Because you never know what can it can come in handy. So she directs me to put the, the GIP mask on. I think our man put it on for us. <laughs> and then, uh, which was helpful for me being in a sub state to have my face covered. It helped me surrender into it. And then Emily directs the man to lay down on the massage table and then directs me to stand one foot above his right shoulder, one foot over his left shoulder. I am standing. My pussy is directly overhead, over his face. I have my get mask on. I'm looking out at all of my friends, people who have facilitated me for years. I am freaking out, but also like, fuck yeah, right? You know? <laughs> and, and then um, Emily looks to the crowd and she goes, are you ready? And everyone's like, yeah, let's fucking go. And then she points to me and she, and she points to our, our friend, are you ready? And he's like, fuck yeah. Points to me, are you ready? And I'm just like, let's go, bitch. And she demands me to squat like right, right over his face. And so there I am, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like how I can hardly, I can hardly do this in front of one person. How am I supposed to do this in front of all of my friends on top of this, this person who I am a huge fan of and who has, has taught me so much about myself over the years? And so, so I am freaking out, and you know, the, the, the muscle that holds every story you could ever imagine is clenched right, right above my pussy opening and I am, I put my knees down above his shoulders and I pray to piss. <laughs> and let me tell you, that was the longest, most pregnant pause I've ever had in my entire life. Not only me, but for you as, you as well, Emily, and our friend <laughs> below and all of our friends were holding their breath for so long. I, I, I asked to take a break. I asked to take a break. I was, I, you know, mind over matter, right? Okay, I've been through a lot of shit. This was testing me beyond, I, beyond my limits I ever thought were possible. And I was like, wow, all the meditation retreats, all the ayahuasca, you know, it just didn't, did not prepare me for something like this. And, and so I, I literally, at a certain point, by the way, Emily said, no, you cannot take a break. She said, no, you're doing this. You, you piss all the time. You can do this now. And I'm like, Okay, Jesus. So I, I'm over him. The room is pretty quiet and like loud trap hip hop music is blaring. And I raise up my right arm and I point literally to the heavens and I ask God to melt me down my body. And I felt every chakra, my crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral, and then Boom. I just start gushing piss all over his face. And he's, I look down. I will never forget it. Christian, never in my life I'll forget the vision of him mouth open, moaning while receiving my piss and all of our friends cheering, <laughs> just <laughs> freaking out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was so it was so liberating. And personally, I, I would love to hear what you got out of this, Emily. But, you know, personally, it was like a, a really beautiful experience for me to, to neutralize uh, some of the deeper parts of me that had, um, you know, dealt with power dynamics and, and even misogyny and um, relaxing my body and feeling safe to relax my body in front of all of my friends. And I felt like I just like restructured all these neural pathways in my brain and in my pussy and all like while being seen by all these people at, that, that I love and they, and they love me and, and to do this with such a good friend, it was, it was really a pivotal moment in, in my life. And um, I, since then, my life has been very expansive and I credit a lot of that to the biggest scene of my life, which, which happened at Unholy. Yeah, and I just want to say like it happened, um, it, it, it was emergent. And this is what I, what I mean when I say sexual performance artistry, um, this stuff, you know, to have that unplanned and have it be the main event of the night, you know, that, 
um, captured everyone's attention and, you know, uh, landed for people in so many different ways, but was by far the thing that people, you know, that stuck with people the most. Um, well, also everybody, you know, in their own experiences through that night, though, they all, you know, so much transformation happened that evening for each individual. But, but, um, you know, this is, uh, not being a preset scene, um, and, and having this be emergent is exactly what our parties are about. So we, you know, invite in people who are, who are ready to let themselves be witnessed, um, ready to like push their own edges and, um, not their boundaries, but their edges and, um, and let themselves like explore in front of others, uh, themselves and get to know themselves sexually and or intimately, you know, um, authentically, vulnerably in ways that <laughs> they haven't before. And this is what catalyzes healing both, you know, for the self and for others and then anyone bearing witness to that. And so, you know, um, congratulations to <laughs> my darling friend, Emily. Didn't and both of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. Yeah, it was, it was transformational for me as well. The, the, the doming of that, that scene was uh, really powerful and I, I won't take time to speak to it here, but um, yeah, incredible, incredible gift. Um, thank you for asking me to do that. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to another episode of Deep In with Christina. I'm just joking. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that story. Oh my God, that was so amazing uh, to get that recorded and that recap. What a powerful experience. And I will admit from being an outsider, I had, you know, I know confidentiality is really important and, and also um, I, you know, from where I stand in the space of community and leadership, I did hear the story, but I didn't hear the story. And so to hear the story, it's like, wow, that's so much more um, potent and liberating. There's like a liberation component to it that I think if anybody ever just heard it in passing would never fully understood understand. But you brought us there like, we were there and there was a deeper understanding of why it happened and how it happened and the magic of that moment and to hear how it just opened you up. I imagine it was like a nervous system upgrade uh, because when you do these things that seem so scary and these visions that seem so far out there and then you, you know, through the power of connection, through the power of friendship, we actually hold each other accountable and how silly it may sound to somebody like, why would anybody ever want to do that? Uh, there's something deeper, you know, there's a, a deeper wisdom inside of that. And also just like the humanness aspect of it, you know, it, it's, it's funny to even say this, but like I mean, back in the day, like there was no, we didn't have toilets and bathrooms and, mm. and things. And it just, no one told you what was like right or wrong and what you're supposed to do and not do. I imagine that there was people mm. back in the day, like who, you know, there's no food or drink. Like they probably tried everything. There's something so primal and what just trying and, and as being children is like, we don't know what's right or wrong to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so even brought in this like childlike curiosity element to it. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody told you it was wrong. I mean, someone might've dommed you with a whip at some points, but like it was almost to even just do it. Yeah. And Emily, I know that you had said, I'm not going to take the time to share about the Dom experience of it, but I'd love to hear the Me other too. perspective, the <laughs> other side of the story. Oh, gosh. Uh, I fear that I'm not as uh, great of a storyteller as uh, the other Emily here. Um, <laughs> oh, let's uh, regulate your nervous system now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me get into my Dom self. <clears throat> Um, actually, I, I actually really want to speak to the, the, the element of, that you just said. It was something that I was talking with Emily about wanting to talk about here, which is the, wrong, the wrongness or the lack of wrongness. And just um, uh, that is my favorite thing about um, what we're doing and our parties is the, um, that, that we're creating a space where you literally cannot do anything wrong as long as you're within the, um, within the boundaries of consent. You know, it's, it, there's it, like whatever you may want to experience. If you find people who are going to agree with you, you know, go into agreement with you around having that experience or, you know, it's welcome. And like, that's just so fun. It's so fun. So, um, 
Yeah. Okay. So the Dom, the Dom experience, uh, on my end, I am um, actually like, uh, I was also grateful to hear the story from your perspective, Emily, because, um, I have blank outs of parts of that, that whole thing. I, and what's so funny is I lost track of time. I was in flow state. I think that's what that was. I definitely lost track of time. I have no idea to this day if that was, um, short or long or, you know, I don't know how long that lasted. Do you have any, I have no, I have no idea how long that was. It was totally a magical moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, timeless, totally timeless. (laughs) So, um, Yeah. Like from my recollection, um, I was like hanging out in a back room and Emily came up to me, told me like what was, you know, what was consented to happen and, um, asked me to Dom the the whole thing. (laughs) And I, you know, Dom her into it because she wasn't gonna be able to do without that, without, without me. Oh my God, what an honor. And I, um, I was, I, it, yeah, I was already in a dom mode that evening and um, in my dom self. And it it took me just deeper into um, uh, my dom self and deeper than I'd ever been before. And um, yeah, I, 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 I still actually don't have words to describe what that is like um, when I experience it. Um, it feels, it, it feels like I fall away and there's, this essence of me that comes forth that, um, is of no mind. Um, it is like a meditation in that way. Um, I guess it's it's kind of what I'm describing as at least I suppose. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I, you know, yes, I, 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 I domed Emily and our friend to set the, set the scene up and sure enough, word traveled throughout the space that something was happening because the entire party circled around, um, which we for sure didn't, ask to have happened and yet definitely happened. Um, and so an audience gathered in a circle around this, uh, this thing at 4am, this thing that became a scene and, um, and, uh, parts that Emily might not remember. Um, I actually domed you not to dance. Emily could not stop (laughs) dancing. (laughs) I was excited. What could I do about it? Oh my God. She couldn't stop dancing. And, um, I, you know, I'm taking control. So like she could not stop wiggling her booty and all I needed her to do was stand still. And, um, she disobeyed over and over and over because (laughs) the music was so good. And so at a certain point, which might have been my personal favorite point, um, to punish her, I actually, um, made her stand still while I asked everyone else in the room to dance. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> I don't remember. That is so funny. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a dancer. So I think there's something about that in particular that was very, very fun for me. So, um, so everybody else in the room danced while Emily was punished by standing still. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, like I could speak to what it's like to wield that type of power over an entire room. Um, <laughs> But, um, but honestly, in that moment, it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like that. Um, you know, it doesn't, it, it's, it, I don't, again, I don't really have words, um, to describe it, but it is, uh, it was, um, yeah, uh, I remember, you know, checking in with, um, actually, yeah, I, I remember checking in a lot, like with Emily, with our friend throughout, um, I believe I made Emily give him a blowjob publicly at one point. I I didn't actually make contact with his cock, but no. Okay, we have different memories. No, um, he, had, <laughs> he, had, he had a cock ring on, or like a cock cage. Not I said cock ring earlier. He had a cock cage on. And then, oh, and no, then I, I had the key for the cage. Yep, yeah, right. You had the key for the cage wrapped around your arm for the yeah. entire night. Yeah. Um, but the cage never came off. I don't think I would know if I gave him a blow job. I did not. No, I, I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. No. That did not okay. Happen. We're going to have to ask some of our friends here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> witnesses. We need witnesses. So, um, yeah, cause I'm pretty sure that was like part of the fantasy. Anyway, so yeah, needless to say, she and I were both in heightened, extremely heightened states, you know, being um, in, a, in a performance moment while uh, doing some very wild shit. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just so fun. So um, yeah, so in my memory, uh, I had her give him a blowjob. And, um, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I, I guess I don't really know what else there is to say for my part of it other than that was a pure 
like f- f- flow, flow, lost track of time, flow state, pleasure experience for me. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I want more. Can I have more? I want more. <laughs> So for those listening, they might be thinking like, what drugs were these girls on? <laughs> or were they drunk? What, 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 I mean, it's 4 a.m. So if you were on any substances, I imagine that everything is calming down at this moment. But what can you say about that? Yeah. Well, I, I'll, I'll say I just, um, yeah, I was just coming up at that moment, actually. Um, yeah, for some reason, it was it was our birthday, and um, there was we both stayed sober like a long time, like unintentionally so. But it was we just were running the party, and it took a while for us to drop into the experience of the party, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so things got started uh, a little bit late, and um, and we didn't drop into our own experiences until or our um, enjoyable you know, uh, medicinally supported experiences until a little later. And, um, yeah, so, um, so I definitely had some stuff in my system at that time, but it had just hit. And that was one of the elements of it that was so wild was like coming up (coughs) while directing this entire thing. Yeah. I was on a, um, a smaller dose of, of medicine and I, really liked using that as a tool in that scene because the medicine I was on was so heart forward and I was able to, to really release my amygdala. Uh, you know, my fear response was less apparent when this was happening. And I don't think I would have been able to do it though. I was still able to fully consent to it. And there's such a fine line there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, it has something to do with me not being able to piss on command because this <laughs> this medicine this medicine does uh yeah makes you not pee very easily but no um, alcohol no alcohol is allowed uh, for unholy we had we had a no alcohol policy um I mean personally I'm just more sensitive I, I don't want to smell your alcohol breath it kind of it just like shuts me shuts me down and I think a lot of um, a lot of people also have that response to alcohol and sexual spaces. So, um, yeah, uh, we, we take a lot of pride in our no, no boozy party. Booze is so 10 years ago. (laughs) It's so true. Okay. Last question. How did you two get to a place in your life where you were inspired to host this party, to have that scene. And I asked, like, did it come out of, were you super horny? Were you dry? Maybe not having a lot of sex? Did you just go through to a ton of sex parties? I know we're not Mm -hmm. Connie's play parties or sex parties. Like, but what was it? What is it? Because Mm -hmm. Witness is coming up, the New Year's party. What is it that has you hosting these experiences? Mm -hmm. Such a good question. Um, We actually both have, I think, very different answers and backgrounds, which is part of what makes our partnership so amazing is like um, we bring very different um, like skill sets to the table. So I actually kind of want you to answer first and then I'll tell my story. (laughs) Um, So I have been really deeply involved in um, Tantra and sex parties and of course in the techno scene, which is this very like queer forward scene. Um, I have had a lot of experience in like dark rooms and things that occur in these, uh, sex forward spaces. And, um, (laughs) no, it's fine. Um, let's see, where was I? Yeah. And I, have also just had a lot of training in Tantra. So I have felt this like burning desire to, do the damn thing myself. And I've gotten so much wisdom and there's been so much beauty taught to me by my teachers who I'm so grateful for. And a lot of them are my friends and I, I, they're my mentors. And I finally felt with the help of Emily, Emily's like, this is, this is entering your field. Let's do it. And of course I, 
I had a little bit of a feeling of like, shoot, I'm not ready yet. I'm not trained enough. I'm not, uh, you don't have enough experience, but it's like in reality, this is happening. This is really happening. And I, and I wanted it to be our own flavor. And, uh, you know, with, with all due respect, I have noticed over the years, there's a little bit of like a, dare I say like garage sale of some of the same things happening in these sexually sex positive spaces, tantra spaces. And I, uh, am putting a stop on that. <laughs> So yeah, there's, there's no, there's no way we can do this twice. Even our parties, there's no way we can do it twice. So, um, yeah, it's a counterculture and, um, yeah, I, I'm so glad that like I've, I've cultivated many, many years of experience, not only in, in these sex spaces, but also deeply involved in plant medicine, being in the jungle and, um, you know, pilgrimages in, in India and studying yoga and meditation and energy healing in Bali, opening my own private practice. So, uh, yeah, all of it really came to a head by owning this part of me that has been in the shadows for so many years and um, allowing it to express and making it safe for other people to express beautifully said. Um, yeah. And for me, um, so unholy was my first sex party period that you, uh, that you were at ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's amazing. And to this day has been my only sex party that I've ever been to. <laughs> amazing as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So for me, um, Let's see here. I, um, I do have a, a, a small background in like kink and BDSM, um, from, well, I mean at this point I, I do, but, uh, I guess many years ago I dabbled and, uh, then went back into monogamous vanilla relationships. How do you dabble in BDSM and kink? Um, yeah, basically just like was single for a bit and, um, knew that I needed to explore actually my sub self, um, back then, this was many, many years ago at this point, almost a decade ago. And, um, I only stayed single for a little bit. And the next relationship I got into was, um, I, I, I brought my path, but then I didn't. And, you know, my now ex but then future boyfriend um, was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I want to explore this too, da, 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 and then, like, just didn't. And so, um, and, and I, I was in old, unhealthy relationship patterns, and uh, so I got into a relationship that was very sexually, like, repressed. Um, I was sexually repressed, um, so vanilla monogamous. And, um, and actually, it was only two and a half years ago that I um, had sort of, like, an uprising within myself of, like, no more, um, no more of this, no more inauthenticity with myself. And no matter what it takes and how scary it is to um, go outside the box that I, um, that's just sort of normative in a way, I'm, I have to do it. I have to do it. And so I did. So I left my life as I knew it two and a half years ago. I left Austin. I left my relationship and I started a uh, nomadic lifestyle. I am still a nomad. Um, and uh, the first thing I did after getting out of that relationship and going out of Austin, um, I hit up a friend who is a, a leader in, in these spaces in the Tantra and other uh, sexual revolutionary spaces. Um, and I, he, he had been a friend um, and he, he and his wife are, are friends. And, um, and I asked him to be my lover. And so um, he was my first lover and was able to help usher me into non-monogamy and... Um, and, and kink and BDSM further. And, um, so as I started to, um, explore those, that part of myself more deeply, I very quickly, um, became a dom, uh, adopted, uh, took on a slave and, um, and went into only like non-monogamy. Um, and, uh, and during this opening, I also, um, started to conceive of, a grand vision um, that I call sex, art, art, sex. And um, I, won't, I, I, I won't go into the big vision right now, but um, it, as I started to sit with basically a, a very high level, it's um, like sleep no more in New York meets, um, <laughs> meets uh, a, a, a BDSM like dungeon meets Cirque du Soleil more or less meets me owl. wolf. <laughs> so basically like immersive, totally Im sensory immersive sex artistry. So an experience, um, of that. And, um, and so, uh, I actually hilariously 
um, wrote, I applied for a, a, a master's degree based on my concept of sex, art, art, sex, and got into a master's program and then decided that maybe a master's degree wasn't the, <laughs> the best way of actually bringing this thing to life. So, um, but the birthday party seemed to be. And so that's actually how I got into the parties was, um, taking this bigger vision, um, and, you know, getting snippets of the vibe of it, like the unholy video that I mentioned earlier and showing it to Emily and being like, you know, this, how do we do this? And so, um, our parties are a very like small scale version of what I feel so inspired by. So my, uh, background does not come from really experience in these spaces, but more of a, like a visionary. I just get, I, I get visions and I, I get the sense of what I want to bring into this world in a bigger way. And that's what, that's what moves me forward. Fascinating. We could go into a whole other podcast with uh, what you're up to and, and what you just shared there. You know, the, the, I, I did learn of an annual event that happens near Washington, D.C., and it's a master slave conference. Mm. You said you had a, a slave at one point. So, yeah, that would be an interesting conversation to unpack because I think it's a little different than subdom. The master slave is is. I would imagine that goes a little bit deeper. Um, and there's a lifestyle that there's some people who are play it in the kink space and some people actually live that particular lifestyle. So tell your, tell your point in a moment. I can see you have a, a, another point. Uh, you, you said this, this, this shift, this opening happened about two years ago. And, you know, growing up, I, I grew up in, the suburbs in Maryland. And I can't really say that I had like the white picket dream, uh, but I did play with Barbies and I thought I would be a mother in my early twenties and have a bunch of children and be married by now. And, mm. and I also, you know, I, I work with now for the past decade, a lot of people in their relational life and they're dating and, you know, running the love club. And I'm curious as you look at, at your life. And I believe that both of you are in some sort of intimate relationship right now at this point. You have partners, I believe. Um, but I love to hear that from you. What is your vision? Like what is your relationship vision for your life now having these experiences that as a child, we didn't even know was possible. So how do you envision this being incorporated in your life as you like, do you want to be married? Do you want to have children? Like, you know, what does that look like? <laughs> it's a great question. Um, really great question. Um, my partner, uh, he helps execute these parties. So <laughs> he runs the show actually. So night of, he basically in, at Unholy, he was, um, yeah, basically the, like, I don't, I don't know what to call it. Um, run of show. Run of show. Yeah. Yeah. General, like, manager, producer, person. Um, uh, and, and he's highly involved in, in our upcoming party as well. Um, yeah, I, I actually, I did, um, a couple years ago, I went through calling in the one, uh, the coaching program by Catherine Woodward Thomas. Um, it's a book and it's a three month book with a daily coaching process to it. And I also hired a coach. Um, yeah, one of my closest girlfriends in Austin is like one of the top coaches uh, or was, <laughs> and she's retired with that now, but, um, yeah. And I designed like exactly the, the man that I want as my partner. And then I fucking manifested him because that's who <laughs> Justin is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really exciting. So, and what that looks like to me is, um, you know, having, a relationship where I am so absolutely fully myself and I get to basically be and do, um, uh, the truest expression of myself, um, in, inside the container of a relationship, um, without, without any, anything holding me back. And he is, uh, uh he is, he is, he provides a space for that, the emotional safety space for that. I mean, he's, my, I would say my biggest fan and supporter and, um, is so committed to like my, my freedom and expression and fullness. And I couldn't be more blessed uh, with a partner like that. And, and in that, um, you know, one of the things that I really required when going into my next relationship was the ability to um, continue 
to pursue my sexual explor- exploration and growth. And, um, and very, very specifically, like, you know, what does that look like? I don't know, you know, because it is a growth path. And maybe that means I continue to dom and I have actually, you know, multiple <laughs> slaves that like, you know, live in the space with us. I don't, I don't know, you know, or maybe it's, uh, you know, dating, dating, dating this or doing that. I, I have no idea. I have sugar dating. Um, you know, I, I don't know. But, um, but, but what I do know is I, I, I needed the, um, the partner that could be with me in, as I, um, expand and, and test and experiment and discover myself. And they have that. So, um, I am actually 41. So in March I will be 42. And, um, do I want kids? I don't know. Our friends just had a baby and I was like, a you know, no, I don't want kids until I'm like hanging out with this baby. And now I'm like, Oh God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> may, may, I, I want him. I know that this little baby, I'll take him. But, um, you know, do I want my own? I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I don't know. I know I got to figure that out pretty soon here, but, um, uh, and you know, we'll see about the marriage thing, but you know, partnership is what's most important to me. And I feel so filled up up by my romantic relationship, my friendships and, um, and you know, the crazy wildlife path that I'm on. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure yet. We'll see. (laughs) Emily, I love your partner. He's so amazing. Christina, I don't know if you've met him, but he is incredible. He, he really shows up and he was amazing at Unholy. It's been a total pleasure getting to know him. And also, you know, Emily and I have calls twice a week. And so I get little check-ins and Mm -hmm. I love hearing about y'all's adventures together, especially being nomadic. What an interesting relationship, you know? It sounds like too, that they're relationship role models for you. They are. They are. Oh, that's really sweet. I am surrounded by role models. It really blows my mind. <clears throat> I, yeah, I'm so grateful to be, to bear witness to y'all's relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I am in what one might call uh, new, new relationship energy, um, very early stages. We're still really getting to know each other and we're, we're in a lot of curiosity and which has been so exciting. I love this stage. Um, yeah, I, I read the first couple chapters of Calling in the One, Emily, because Emily Emily basically dumbed me into reading. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, okay. So I, so I started reading it and, um, and it, it kind of just like got my gears turning. And then, uh, yeah, life happened. I was curating an art show. And so I put it down and um, lo and behold, I went to a singles event here in Austin at Kuya. And I met this, met this really great guy. Um, and things just kind of have been snowballing since. And my, my one condition that I said to him was like, uh, I, I think he might've said, he said that he was nomadic, which is so ironic because you're, <laughs> you're nomadic, but he, he said he was nomadic. And I was like, oh, I'm only available for men who live here in Austin. I'm here long term. And he's like, got it. And then months later, he emails me and tells me that he's signing a year lease in Austin and we decide to, um, continue our, our correspondence. So, um, yeah, he'll be signing his lease at the end of the month. And so I'll be you know, with him, with him in, in person. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being in, in the felt experience with him. And what's even more interesting is that, uh, he will be at witness. So that will be like the first social gathering that he will be <laughs> at, which I'm like, all right, if, if he can't take the heat, he can just, you know, get out of the kitchen. So might as well release the mask and be, be your full, full self. And I, you know, I I did warn him. I'm like, this is just one part of me that is really blown up just for a short period of time. There's so much more to me than this, I promise. (laughs) He's like, I figured. So yeah, I'm I'm in some, you know, excitement and nervousness, but um, yeah, I look forward to continuing this journey of uh, kink and um, creative sexuality. And personally, I'm I'm more of a uh, monogamous type. So um, exploring that with a partner, I'm, I'm hoping all over the world, you know, I just have visions of us like, you know, and all these different subcultures in, in Tokyo and Korea. And, um, I have so much fun in Mexico city and I love the parties out there. So I, I would love to take him there and he can take me to all the places that he's been. And we can just really explore each other's insides with the different varying outsides all over. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God, you guys are so great. I'm so glad that we captured this end and you shared about little your relationally. I think we, 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 we humanized you even <laughs> a little bit, a little bit more. We were like, okay, 
I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> and I hope, you know, listeners, if you feel inspired, come and join us at Witness. Because if you've gotten through this podcast, you can probably do a Witness experience, the, the Emily's experience. And if you miss this one on New Year's in Austin, Texas, There'll be more. Fourth There'll be July. another 4th of July, a 4th of July party. You And if you haven't been to Austin, I mean, there's like, I, I tell Kimmy Inch that in the future, there's going to be a plaque outside of her residence and being like, Kimmy Inch lived here because of the types of parties that she hosts. Oh. And I can see that Austin is like this sexually expressive um, a space that's like waking up energy and a lot of shifts and changes are happening here. Mm. Thank you both for sharing. Anything else that you'd like to say before we wrap it up? I just want to say thank you. And thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure expressing this underground thing to you and your audience. So it feels really special. This is a big moment for us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Christina. And thank you to all the listeners. Wow, you did get an exclusive inside track. So if you if this is your first time listening, keep listening. And <laughs> if you have been listening before, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to another episode of Deep End with Christina. If you do enjoy this podcast, please do like, subscribe, rate it. If this episode wasn't for you, just ignore all that. Um, don't leave a comment or anything of that sort. I love you all. Bye for now. Mwah.